A win is a win? You are Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Maryland wins. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making us part of your day. And like I said, Maryland wins. But it didn't make me feel better about the team overall. I'm going to go ahead and say this. Maryland cannot play like that if they want to win a Big Ten game or against a Virginia or anybody else. That was disappointing. It just wasn't good enough. We came out flat. They went up 14-0. And the game is exactly how I said it would go down. Exactly how I said. I said Charlotte's going to run the ball. I said Styles make fights. Charlotte runs the ball well. We don't stop the run well. And the averages came out pretty good. Like It looks like we stopped the run if we just look at the stats. But in the first half, they were running the ball on us pretty easily. They would throw out like three tight end sets, and they were just pounding it. They didn't care. Maryland adjusted a little bit, but I thought we were going to know from the beginning that they were going to run the ball. But like I said, it was exactly how I said the game would go. They covered the points. They ran the ball. They controlled the clock well. Their coach had a couple things up their sleeve, and they matched up well against us, and we weren't able to cover the spread. I was hoping I was going to be wrong, but if Maryland ever wants to win a Big Ten game, we cannot just play like we just did. First of all, there were so many mistakes, um, turnovers, and different things that we did that we just cannot do if we want to beat anybody in the Big Ten. Forget Penn State and Ohio State and Michigan or whatever. If we want to beat a team like Indiana, we can't do that. Or if we want to beat Michigan State on the road, we can't just play like we did. We knew exactly what we had to do to beat this team, and we came out flat. I don't know why the game plan wasn't ready to stop the run. We knew what they were going to do. We talked about it all week. We knew they were going to try and run the ball. And then Talia can never play that way if we want to win games in the Big Ten. The stat line didn't come up come off horribly, but 25 to 36 for 287 yards, you're like, okay, it was a pretty good game. But the two interceptions got me. Those were terrible reads. One on a pick six. If you're going to throw a pick, it cannot be on a pick six. It was a wrong read. The defender was in the flat. He thought the defender was going to drop back, and he picked it right off. And Talia cannot make those mistakes now as a multi-year starter. We've talked about it. He can't have a stinker game. And this better be his stinker game. If this is a stinker game for the year, okay, what, whatever. Like, we can still do really good things this year. But it can't get worse from this. There can't be a worse game from this if we want to win. I was expecting him, his stinker game, honestly, to kind of look like this, to have, like, 300 yards and maybe have two interceptions. But I'm honestly so glad we didn't play well. We got punched in the mouth in the first half. We did. We weren't even winning in the first half. It was good for us to get punched in the mouth. I think we were a little bit too confident. The things that we were saying, we're ready to win a Big Ten championship. We're in that position as a program, which I didn't necessarily agree with. But I also thought this is the best Maryland team under Coach Michael Oxley. But the way that we played, it just can't happen with the Jaquan Shepard busting coverage on one of the first plays in the game. He try and read the quarterback's eyes and make a play in the ball. We can't do that. We can't give up the big play because if we do that against some of the other Big Ten teams, they're going to make it. They're going to make us pay. We gave up two plays against them that equated to 14 points that had nothing to do with them, that were per purely what we did in our mistakes that kept us in the game. And those are two things that we can't do. We can't give up explosive plays against other teams in the Big Ten, we did that against them. We And we can't have pick sixes. We just can't have those. Everyone knows in turnovers football, they just don't go hand-in-hand hand to winning. And if we want to win games in the Big Ten, and I think we have all the talent in the world. I think we have a ton of talent. There's going to be guys I'm going to talk about that I thought played really well. But, there was, but like I said, Talia didn't play well. He has to play better if we want any chance at winning a games. But 
One thing did go really well. I did like how Roman Hemby played. He got the ball a little bit more. Like I said, I said I want more Roman Hemby touches. And he did. And he had over 100 yards. Really overall a good game from Roman Hemby. A good rebound game from the first game. He didn't play bad in the first game. But it was just I wanted to see more of him. But like I said, 19 carries for 160 yards is exactly where I want for Roman Hemby. I said in the... um. Before the game, I was like, I want him to be closer to 19. I said exactly, I think, the number 19. I was like, I want him to be closer to 19 carries. And that's exactly what he did. And then Colby McDonald, oh, my gosh. He kept us in the game at a certain point with his big run. If it wasn't for Colby McDonald, I'm not sure we win that game. I mean, I'm sure we could have squeaked it out. But Colby McDonald had a huge game. He went eight carries for 73 yards. And I'm not going to say there's a competition for the second running back, but Antoine Littleton didn't get as many carries as Colby McDonald, especially towards the end. Antoine Littleton only had four carries for 14 yards with averaging 3.5 carries. I love Antoine Littleton. I think we got to be more smart with where we play him, especially if we want to win in the Big Ten. I think he needs to come in in short yardage. Distance. I think he should be in on pretty much all short distance. Third and ones, fourth and ones, third and twos, whatnot, if we're going to run the ball. I don't think he needs to play as much in the first two downs. But I think Anton Littleton needs to play in certain spots. But Colby McDonald looked really good. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him get more carries. But so did Roman Hemby. But overall, the running back room for me was it was pretty solid. I thought I thought played pretty well. And in the wide receiver room, even Caden Prather had a, a – a bounce back game. If you remember the first game, he had a drop, a bad drop. But this game, he led our team in receptions with 80 yards. Those three players have to do that if we want to win games in the Big Ten, especially against Penn State, Michigan, Ohio State. We're going to need a player that we didn't expect to come out and be an X factor like Coley McDonald was and have a big play. We're going to need that if we want to win games in the Big Ten. But overall, I thought those three players played really well. I liked how Caden Prather looked. Our wide receiver room is something. Like I said, every week it's going to be different in the wide receiver room because there's so many different bodies, so many different types of players in there. Like last week, Octavian Smith had like above 50 yards. This year, or this game, he only had 18 yards. Tyree Chambers didn't play. He had injury. He was like a game-time decision. They decided to sit him out, which I was okay with. You don't need to um, rush him back against Charlotte. But Roman Hemby also had 55 yards receiving. This is the kind of back that I wanted Roman Hemby. I need them to get the ball. He's one of the best in the Big Ten at doing everything. He's so versatile. I love what Roman Hemby brought. He brought a lot of energy and confidence. That running back room was ready to go. That was one of the only components of our team that was ready to go. But talking about the defense, I talked about it. Jaquan Shepard gave up that big play where he tried to snap down, read the quarterback eyes, on a little out route, and then his guy got behind him for a bomb. One of the first plays of the game. It just absolutely can't happen against anybody else. But I thought there was also some bright spots on defense. I thought Jay Sean Barham had a really solid game. It has him down for two sacks. He had four tackles, two sacks. Very solid game for Jay Sean Barham. I loved how it looked. Jay Sean Barham, I'm going to talk about this on the week, during the week, but he might be just better at being an edge rusher. I mean, I like playing him at both linebacker and just throwing him on the edge, but he might be our best edge rusher, but I really want to get into that during the week when we get into more of the details of the game. But Jay Sean Barham had two sacks, four tackles, looked like as good as everyone thought he did being an impact player, but the way he comes around the edge sometimes is really impressive. But overall, Jay Sean Barham looked really good. Not concerned about Barham at all. And then I thought Caleb Wheatland made a couple of really good plays. Those might be my the best two linebackers right now, both of the two youngsters. Both true sophomores were in good hands in the linebacker room. That might be the best linebacker room in the country next year, especially with Michael Harris coming in too. Or Michael Harris is already here, but with Michael Harris being a sophomore, them moving up to juniors next year, that's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. But Caleb Wheatland made a couple plays where I'm like, he might be too good not to be a starter. Obviously, I love Ruben Hippolyte, really good player. But right now, Caleb Wheatland's playing really good ball. I thought the defensive line overall picked it up at the end. 
We were loading the box up, though, which I thought we should do. But here's my concern with how just loading up the box and how we couldn't really stop the run at the first part of the game where we weren't exactly loading it up. I mean, we put a lot of guys up there, but it wasn't the same as we did later on in the game. We couldn't stop the run with just normal base defense, even when we, like I said, would put a good amount of guys up there in the first half, and we still couldn't stop the run. That concerns me. If we had to put everyone up on the line of scrimmage to stop the run against Charlotte, that works against Charlotte because they can't throw the ball. But against other teams in the Big Ten that can throw the ball around, that's not going to work. So we are going to have to fix that. I thought the defensive line unit picked it up towards the end. But overall, that's going to have to be fixed. Jordan Phillips and King Basote are going to have to continue to get better and everyone else in that group. But overall, I thought the defense played Oh, all right. I think it has to be better. I, I think there can never be a bust in coverage. But that's all we have for today. Thanks for listening to the post game show. We're going to have a show every day this week, and we'll get more into the details of the game. Like I said, Jay Sean Barham, should he be a full edge? We're going to talk about Talia, why he always has a couple of bad games. We're going to talk about the defense. We're going to talk about the offense. We're going to give an offensive MVP defensive MVP. So make sure you like and subscribe and thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.